Welcome to another segment of Down and Dirty. I'm Jim Martin with the Charleston Parks Conservancy. Today we're going to look at the June Garden, Vegetable Garden, and some of the things that you can be doing right now. So we are standing in front of the first crop of corn that I've ever grown. And I want to take a look at one of these beautiful ears that you can see looking down these rows. This is a variety called Early Sun Gold. It was planted on April the 29th, so it's less than uh, two months old. And the beauty of this crop is, if you can see the height on this, um, much reduced than what you would normally see with some of the, uh, the types of corn that you can grow. And let's open this up and take a look at what we have. Oh, look at that. Is that not beautiful? Nothing like growing your own corn, I'll tell you what. And, you know, that looks so delicious, I think I'm going to have to take a bite of it raw. It just looks so yummy. Mm -mm. One of my favorite bell pepper types is one called Purple Beauty. And you can see it over here. And you don't often see these bell peppers. Usually you think they're green. This is one that turns this beautiful purple color. And it's just starting to turn right now. I hope you can get a good look at that. So obviously no southern garden is complete without tomatoes and uh, one, of the, one of the things that I find uh, I can't go with just one or two varieties so we have about 10 to 12 different varieties of tomatoes in the garden this year and here's one you can see called um, uh, Better Boy and look at the size on that. Here we are with the second variety of corn that I'm growing this year, Silver Queen. One of the things you'll notice about it is it's about double the size of the other variety that I put in. They were planted the same day, so you can see the dramatic difference. Also, if you look at this one, if you look way up at the top, it's tossing out. That's the pollen source. It's windblown, so it will drop down onto the silk that's emerging where the corn will be developing. And as the uh, pollen drops down, the, uh, the silk is fertilized, and that helps that it will force the corn to fill out to that delicious flavor and wonderfulness that we have this time of year with our corn. So if you're like me, you think that you need five of everything. But if, what you're looking at here is one eggplant. And look at all of the eggplants that we have hanging off this. We tend to forget just how much these things grow. I put these sweet potatoes in this bed, which is what, four by eight, somewhere around there and put them in little rows and I thought isn't this cute well here it is June and it's totally overflowing in the bed going into the walkways so this really is a good time of year to step back take a look at everything and do a little housekeeping which could be cutting these back so I'm gonna just go around along here and do a little snipping uh, as I said they are really reaching out into the walkway And this is just going to sort of keep it in control a little bit. Wherever I make cuts, it's going to send side shoots out. One of the other things I'm doing is making sure um, any yellow leaves, any dead foliage that you find, make sure that's picked up. And then I'm, I'm going to be taking this, and I'm going over to the compost pile. One of the things you might notice in the garden right now is we did that mulching earlier in the spring, putting leaves or straw, whatever you put down. What I'm finding is that there are spaces starting to show up where the mulch is no longer there. It's either blown out or it's been washed away or it's decomposed and worked into the soil, which is a great thing. So this time of year, I'm going to go ahead and look for those spaces and I'm going to go ahead and add some more mulch. Add some more uh, of this that will actually help hold the moisture. And right now we're having a, uh, a time of trying to get some rainfall in here. So <clears throat> we're going to want to hold as much moisture in the soil as we possibly can, which is one of the great things about this, uh, putting this mulch down. The hot topic right now is watering. With this vegetable garden, I usually water uh, in the mornings if I can, and I water, try to water at ground level. So I take my nifty little uh, watering wand, and I will just run the plant, the watering wand near the plant at the base. So I'm really not wetting the foliage down. I soak it really well. And this garden that I have here takes me about, oh, maybe 45 minutes to water the garden in the morning, which is a nice ritual because 
gives me a chance to see how everything's doing, what's becoming ripe, are there any insect pest problems that have come about, and other things that I need to do, such as some of the things we talked about, mulching, adding additional mulch. What about a bed that maybe needs to be planted? What am I going to put in there? So it's a little bit of a thought thing at the same time that I'm taking care of the watering. Now, in the vegetable garden, I water a little bit more often than what uh, we tell people to water in the other parts of the garden, in the ornamentals. Usually what I do with that is water every other day um, during really hot times of the year and dry times of the year, which we're having right now. So as a general rule, water in the mornings, um, make sure you have mulch down, helps conserve the water that you're putting down. I don't do overhead watering this uh, because it, it leads to more disease and pest problems. It also is wasteful of water. Um, if you have an irrigation system or you have, uh, for example, like a, uh, tubes that run through the garden, that is one of the best things that you can do. Um, but for me, I just uh, do a little bit of hand watering here and there and it seems to uh, take care of what I need. Even though it's June, there's plenty of things that we can still be planting in the vegetable garden right now. One of those are tomatoes. And a few weeks ago, I stuck some transplants in that I got from one of our local growers, Sea Island Savory Herbs. And this is a tomato variety that is called Red Zebra. And the thing that I did not do is stake it up properly. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now because it's never too late. Staking doesn't have to be one of these complicated things. I love using just bamboo uh, post uh, stakes. And so we're going to take uh, three in this grouping right here. And I'm going to do a quick, show you how I would do it. First off, I'm going to go ahead and more of a teepee kind of thing. And you know, as I said, this doesn't have to be anything that's uh, totally complicated. I use paper coated wire in the garden and it's something you can find at one of the craft stores. And all I'm doing is basically tying these two together, twisting, real easy. So I put my stakes in place, now I'm going to go ahead and tie the plant up. I love using fabric scraps, whatever I can get my hands on. The thing that's really nice about these is the softness so that when you're tying it up, it actually doesn't damage the plant in any way. Um, I also don't worry too much about the old crisscross, which you know, the, the figure eight kind of pattern, which you can use here. And then this is, it has some give in it so that as it starts to grow, this is not gonna hold it back. So I planted this crop of potatoes in April and over the last few months I've been harvesting and we're at that point where this is the last row of the potatoes so I thought that together we could go ahead and um, dig those potatoes up and you could see how wonderful it is to be able to dig your own potatoes and then we're gonna go ahead and reprepare this bed for another crop but before we do that let's dig in here and see what we have and look at them popping up there look at that isn't that fantastic so this is Harvesting your own potatoes, nothing better in the whole wide world than your own potatoes, I'll tell you. Um, this is a variety called Russet Burbank, and it's a brown, brown variety. And here we go again. Dig in there. Look at that. Look at those potatoes coming up. And I believe that we are going to have some really good potato salad tonight. So we've harvested in this bed recently, just dug up potatoes, and now we're ready to go ahead and put in another crop. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and add a bunch of organic matter back to the soil because over the four, three, three months or so that the potatoes were in here, they were using nutrients in the soil that we put in, so we want to replenish it. First thing I'm going to put in is some mushroom compost. And I'm going to put uh, anywhere from three to six inches worth. I'm going to spread that out onto the surface. Now's a good time to add some other things, such as some organic fertilizers. And this is one that's uh, uh, Bradsfield Organics, and it's uh, made up of alfalfa meal, poultry, um, <coughs> chicken leftovers, uh, uh, manure, as well as molasses. 
So we're going to take that and we're going to spread that out over the surface. And as that breaks down over time, the microorganisms break it down and add nutrients. Another product that I really love, which is made locally, are worm castings and organic uh, garden supplies, a, a Charleston-based company. And what they do is they take kitchen scraps and a material from a lot of the local grocery stores, the green material, and they um, put the worms in with it and it uh, makes this basically worm compost or castings they call it. So I'm going to add that in as well. So really the success that you're going to continue to have in the vegetable garden, it's all about what we're doing right now. It's hot, um, it's June, and we're starting to probably get a little bit lazy in our gardens. So here's a few tips to remember to kind of keep you going through the rest of the summer. Number one, it's still plenty, of t uh, plenty early for us to go ahead and continue to plant summer crops. Things like sweet potatoes, tomatoes, corn, eggplants, squash, cantaloupes, watermelons, it just goes on and on. All those can still be planted. Tip number two would be don't forget the cleanup. We're seeing dead leaves, things that are falling off the plants. We don't want any of that left around. That stuff should all go in the compost pile. And then the third, sort of the, the thing that we're all thinking about right now is watering. If you can, water early in the morning. But make sure that you're not watering the foliage. Water at ground level. Um, the other thing to remember is if you, uh, the worst time to water is at night or, or as the sun is going down. And the absolute worst thing to do is water the foliage during that time. You're going to have more problems such as powdery mildew on your squash. Thanks for joining us for another segment of Down and Dirty. I'm Jim Martin with the Charleston Parks Conservancy, Park Angel number 11. Uh, you know, we have a lot of information on the website that can help you with um, lots of questions that you might have on how to vegetable garden, um, all different kinds of ways of growing here in the south. Check that out at charlestonparksconservancy.org.